Yeah, they're pretty virtuous. Um, um, and I also have my freeze-dried meals, uh, which I have for my dinner each day. Um, as kindly surprise me by Sea to Summit. Yes. Um, from backcountry cuisine. They're um, so what would that be? What would a nice dry cuisine at the end of the day consist of? <laughs> um, well, I've got Thai curry, yeah. uh, which is great with a bit of powdered um, coconut milk in it. That's a real treat. I've got fish pie, um, hopefully sustainable seafood. Um, oh, babuti, good South African dish. Um, I know we've got a few South Africans here tonight. Um, and um, oh, I think there are only four different flavours that I like actually. <laughs> the rest, and I can't remember what the fourth one was now. Um, they all need a little bit of jazzing up, so I'm taking a few spices and things with me as well. So you rotate them sort of Monday night is Thai curry night? Oh, well, come come about one o'clock in the afternoon, I'm already going, oh, what should I have for my dinner? <laughs> food is a bit of a highlight out there. Okay, <laughs> Life that... gets very simple, it's all about oh, yeah. food, water, yeah. and getting a bit closer to my destination. Yeah. And so you have your evening meals sort of as the as the light goes down. Or? That's right. My um, my TV when I'm on the boat is sunrise and sunset, yeah. and um, because I'm generally rowing west, but row is face backwards. I'm usually facing the sunrise. That's fine. But um, dinner, I, I schedule to have my dinner while the sun is setting, so that I can enjoy it in all its glory. Is that, is that the better part of the day? Knowing you've done a, a good twelve hours rowing and. All as well. Well, actually, usually as the sun goes down, I usually have to do another shift after that. But um, yeah, my favourite moment is um, probably as I'm brushing my teeth and I'm looking up at the, the Milky Way or the Southern Cross, and um, I'm like <sighs> another day over, another day closer to my destination. And uh, yeah, that is a that's a good feeling. Um, I remember on the on the show when I was asking about this, you see it as little steps. You must not see it as a big, big challenge otherwise it'll be enough to put anyone off. So it's yeah. little steps. So at the end of each day it's another step that you've just taken. I really learned that the hard way. Yeah, on the Atlantic, I um, on about day three, as soon as I got over the seasickness, I started going, okay, so where am I now? How fast am I going and how far do I have to go? And that was not a good um, calculation to do. Um, I realised that at two miles an hour with 3,000 miles to go, it was going to take me a very, very, very long time. And I became really quite overwhelmed by it. Um, and I discovered that it's actually quite, um, what's the word, um, anti-progress when you just look at an enormous challenge all in as one chunk. Um, because I started thinking, oh, well, if I skip this rowing shift, I can make up for it later on. It doesn't really matter. And you can actually go into quite a bad downward spiral at that point. So eventually I realized that I really just had to get out there and keep sticking yours in the water. And so now I've actually got quite a good discipline. I, I have this lovely daydream in my mind of what it's going to be like to arrive at my destination. And that, that luxury hotel with crisp white sheets and the white fluffy towels and the fantastic food and the glass of chilled Sauvignon Blanc and all the things that I'm really, really looking forward to. Um, and now I think what I have to do today to get a little bit closer to it, but then I deliberately don't think about anything between today and the destination. So you've obviously become very, very good at being focused on the job at hand. I've learned a lot by doing it the wrong way, yeah. yeah. And do you carry that, you know, into other walks of life, you know, when you're not, like, for example, in the last few months being on land? Yeah, definitely. Um, whether I'm writing a book or trying to save the planet or, or whatever, I, I just really try and break it down into little chunks and focus on what can I do today to get a bit closer to my goal. And it's, it's been, I don't know, pretty amazingly empowering for me, actually, to get my head around that because I used to be very daunted or even fearful of, of big challenges and I think now, I'm sure there are things that I would just go, oh no, you've got to be kidding, there's no way I can do that, but so many more things suddenly seem a bit more doable. If you just go, okay, where do I want to be? Where am I now? What's my to-do list to get from here to there? And how do I break that down into bite-sized chunks? And then okay, I'll just start at the beginning and keep going until I get to the end. Um, so the rowing's been very character building. Yeah, I mean, you must have learned stuff about yourself that when you were working at Anderson's in London, you never even knew existed. 
existed. And then, this is, you know, this is the same for everybody. We all know what we carry around on a daily basis, but we've, we've maybe not even done any trawling to see what is a death. I remember a, another former colleague from Anderson's once saying to me that he just couldn't imagine how I could spend that much time with myself. And I remember looking at him, and he's a really nice guy. I was thinking, how can he be afraid of what he might learn about himself? I think it's actually, I feel very lucky that I've had that opportunity to spend time alone. Doesn't sound funny today. Well, I suppose you wind the clock back a, a thousand years or more, even less than that, a few hundred years, and we probably all used to have a lot more time to spend with ourselves, whether it's working out in the fields or. Um, I, I don't know, I think um, we're all just so busy now, and I would love to see a few more people to Join actually... you on the trek. <laughs> oh no, I, I definitely row alone, they'll have to get their own boat, but uh, um, just taking time out to kind of be with themselves, so I mean, it's not that big of a deal. With that in mind, tell me about the thing that you've learned about yourself that you really like, and the thing that you've learned about yourself that you really don't like. Oh, blimey, we're getting a bit deep here, aren't we? I'm feeling a bit exposed suddenly. Um, um, okay, what do I like? Um, do you know what? I'm, I think my motives are pretty good. I, um, I'm pretty okay. Um, I do the right things for the right reasons, or sometimes the wrong things for the right reasons, <laughs> but my intentions are always good. I always try and do my best. Um, things, <coughs> oh, things that I don't like. <laughs> um, <laughs> where do I begin? <laughs> um, well, the thing that I'm feeling a bit uncomfortable with right now is that I'm feeling desperately self-indulgent for talking about myself so much. I would love to turn the tables on you. That's not the deal. <laughs> That's not the deal. Okay. Um, I can sometimes feel sorry for myself. I, on the Atlantic, I was definitely having a big, having a big time pity party. I, I can. Um, Has anyone seen videos of the YouTube videos that uh, Roz posted on, on that trip? On that trip? Yeah. Yeah. Video number two. Oh, video Very number windy. two. That was the, uh, <laughs> we haven't got that here tonight. That is so funny. Well, I could do. Funny. I could do. It's, it's, it's the one on the where laptop. everything was going wrong, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. And Mostly in here, did, actually. But, the, but also mechanically, things were not working as well. Was this the one with the oars break? All four of my oars had broken, and my satellite. I didn't very much as row across the ocean. All oars had broken. Okay, so that doesn't make it. Yeah, that was a bummer. So, yeah. so the oars had broken, the sat phone had broken. Camping stove, so no food. Camping stove. Yeah, cold freeze dried food leaves a little bit to be desired. Yeah. Um, it's broken. Um, there's some other important things. Oh, the stereo. The stereo oh, broken, no music. Um, so, yeah. It so, it wasn't going well. So, I think it's probably quite so understandable well. that you were probably feeling a bit sorry for yourself. Other people have been through worse things, I think. I mean, it wasn't like I. It wasn't like I had cancer or, you know, it wasn't really bad stuff and it was something that I volunteered for as well. It wasn't like anyone else had forced me to go and go across the Atlantic. Um, were, were there times then when you literally thought, why on earth am I doing this? Oh, every day. Every day out there on the Atlantic. But well, once, you, well, once you started, of course you can't turn around. It's you can't. Back. I mean, luckily for me, you pretty much point uh, past the point of no return after the first few hours because those good old trade winds are already blowing you towards Antigua. So um, I had to keep going. And also, a good thing or a bad thing about me is that I'm quite stubborn and a bit proud. So I told everyone that I was going to do this. It's the same strategy I used to use when I, I did a couple of marathons. And I would tell everybody um, that I was going to do a marathon so that I was sort of cutting off my path of retreat. Yeah. And um, so there was no way I was going to quit. I was going to be that would have been much too embarrassing. Um, we've got to the end of the day. You don't have a glass of wine at the end of the day or anything no like that. No sundowners for me. You, no. you do a little bit of rowing before or after your meal, and then, and then what, what happens? Do you shut her all up for the night? Lock up? I do. I, I stow the oars and um, yeah, just make everything was tidy because yeah. I know from experience that if something is absolutely, you've got to keep 
keep ship shape. Yeah. Because otherwise, and if I leave something lying around, it's not going to be there in the morning. The and then are. what happens? So you know where you are as you, if you like, switch off the light and go to sleep. Yeah. And um, what, what what happens? Do you, you you shut it all up so that obviously there's a big store or anything like that? Well, I go into the little cabin at the back. Yeah. Um, and um, just before I completely shut up shop for the night, I do my blog. Um, which is actually quite a hard bit of the day because yeah. I've rode for 12 hours, I'm tired, it's usually really hot, the cabin is stifling, and I'm sitting, you know how hot laptops get, yeah. and I've got like heat rash all over my legs, and I'm sitting, oh. so sometimes trying to sound upbeat and cheerful in my blog yeah. is a bit of a challenge, but it is also good because it sometimes gives me a bit of a perspective on the day. Like if I've had a really bad afternoon and the currents have been playing merry hell with my plans and, um, but maybe I'd had a good morning. When I actually sit down and write about it, I just kind of take one step back from my yeah. immediate drama and hopefully stop being quite such a drama queen and you know, just get a perspective on the day. Yeah. And, and so you write your little email, which you then fire via sat phone to a little place in France, which yeah. it up and turns it into a... I think fire might not be quite the right verb here. <laughs> More like trundle. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, it's like I, I want to ask you a question about the cost of this. And okay, whoever can get this right gets one of these. Each time an email is sent from that hot little laptop to France, and then appears on the blog, it costs a certain amount of money, um, which Roz has to find, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we're doing what we're doing tonight. How much does it cost, Roz, at the end of the day, to tap, 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 to press send, just an email, no attachment, just an email? Anyone have a guess? Six dollars. Ten dollars, six dollars, twelve dollars. I want your call plan. <laughs> Seven euros. Oh, <laughs> cocoa, cocoa, the currency's consistent. What, 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 what are we getting? Aussie dollars? That's it, Aussie dollars. Aussie yeah. dollars. Anyone else want to have a guess? I don't think we've got it right yet, have we? 25. I didn't hear the right answer yet. 50 bucks. Freeze. Shall I whisper? Yeah. I've got a mic on. Can I whisper? Okay, so whoever's nearest. 16. Did anybody say 15? I was going to 16. I said 16. Oh, that's good enough. There you go. How about these? <laughs> Got another one. What happens if Ros wants to attach a photo to that email? <laughs> okay, how much does it become then? How much does it cost her for a simple press send job? Fifty dollars? Fifty dollars? Do you know Um yes it is. Yeah. Sorry? $35. $35? $75? Oh, yeah. It actually all depends on the resolution. I mean, if it's... Small, I For a 20 kilobyte file, which is pretty low res, but it's enough to, for you to see what's seven going one. on, that'd be about $7.50. $7.50. $7.50. $7.50. Yeah. $7.50. So how much, much was it for an email? $15. So we, we're adding on to it. I know I've got that. Because we have the resolution. Um, if you want to put a 30 second video up, all right. Right. Oh, that's, Barry, what's the upload speed? Um, it's about 2.4 kilobytes a second. Well, okay. that's what they claim. I don't believe a word of it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> they even lie when she's in the middle of the ocean. It's the same with all the telephone operators here. Yeah. Ah, 2.4. So it's going to take a while for a um, video that Ros will put up so that we can all look at that, you know, what's going on, on on the blog, okay? That's going to be quite pricey, isn't it? What do you reckon, folks? $100? $100. Ros has to pay for this. 75 so you said $50. It is about that, isn't it? It's about yeah. $50. There you go. We give her a clap. <laughs> so, when you get home. People were almost right because the software is supposed, if it loses the satellite connection, which happens frequently, it's supposed to resume where the was. transmission where it broke off, but that doesn't always happen. So, and you must look at that thing and see this is getting expensive. Yeah. 